Okay, so uh, this basic idea is that it, uh, if we want to get this diagonal uh, uh, truss, we have to shift this list. So from one, so for example, from the bottom, the one to two, uh, one to two, two to three, three to four, right? We want to connect it. It's like these connecting lines as well, but because we want to connect the first point to the second point, second point to the third point, third point to the first point. So the list needs to be shift, should be, uh, should be shifted as well. So it's like within the shift. So this is a code, just four components and, and, and done. So, but anyway, uh, I will upload this um, uh, code, the screenshot code uh, to the canvas. So you can check it out later, all right? So now we have points, right? Let me hide the, uh, the lines. So this is a point, right? Point representation that we, uh, we are asking. And then the second thing is a line, right? So a line like this, right? So we use lines to uh, represent the, the form, right? So the second thing. The third one we're going to we are going to use surface. All right, surface. So surface is like a board. Okay, I want to. Uh, so you can see that we always want to materialize it. So it's not only single line. We add a pipe, right, to have a more sense about materiality. So the second, th the third thing is like this. Let me show you. So the third one is like these, all right? So I would like to make a, a component like these. So this form can be uh, represented by this uh, 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 board, right? So it has thickness and it has is represented with a surface, right? So that is the uh, next thing we want to do, all right? Okay, so that's height, these uh, line geometry. Let's move to the, the the surface one. So we can go back to review our what kind of thing we have right now. So we have this, right? And also because we did the extrusion for the, the lofting for the uh, to connecting the lines, right? So we do have another thing is like this, right? So remember that we do the lofting, like one to two, two to three, three to four. So I think that might be a good chance that we just directly use this loft surface to get this kind of geometry that what we want to do, right? So my idea is simple, that once we have this lofting, so we have a lot of loftings, right? So one is this one, the second one, the third one, fourth one. I think the quickest way is to make it solid and then scale it down and subtract it, right? So offset it, something like that. If you want to say uh, offset this kind of thing, we can offset it and just subtract the, uh, the solid inside, right? So we can get this thing. There are, again, there are multiple ways to do so, but I think that might be a good way to go about it. So let's do this thing. So we, I want to grab the geometry from this loft, right? So here, I'm going to use a geometry container, so like hexagon, black hexagon. Again, just to recap, the black hexagon is always the container, right? It is not doing anything. It just store the geometry, the data here. So here I'm going to put it down, and then I'm going to hide the previous one, and also the, all the others, I'm going to hide it, right? So I have this geometry. So once, once you use the hexagon, the black hexagon component to store the geometry, it's almost like a copy. So you copied it again here. All right, so I'm going to use this thing to do the, uh, uh, the surface one, right? So let's do this, all right? So before we start, I want to check what are the actual things we have. So I'm going to use this item. I just want to see the first one is it hollow or is something, right? So I bake it. Okay. So in Rhino, we can see this is actually a hollow surface, like this. 
right? Right? So the first thing is that I want to have a full solid of this thing, and then I want to scale it down, right? To and subtract the smaller one, and then we done the we have this kind of profile, and that is the purpose. Right? So very straightforward. That uh, let me delete this list item. All right. So that is the whole thing we have. Oh, there's one thing that if you are moving uh, around on your Rhino uh, canvas and sometimes it's hard to focus, you know, like focus the zoom on your Rhino things, uh, on your Grasshopper thing, and because it's preview, so you cannot select it and use ZS to to zoom uh, the selected, right? So here's a, a function that you can go to Rhino, uh, Grasshopper, select the components. So for example, this component is this geometry, right? You can use middle click. Here is a magnifier and uh, with a small red stuff. You can click it and it will zoom into the geometry here. So you will have better uh, pan and rotate uh, zoom uh, view, right? Just a small thing, right? Okay, so let's continue. So it is hollow. So the first thing I want to make is solid. So let's use cap hose. This is a, a, a component that uh, we use it to close the opening of the grab. This is not very uh, uh, smart component because sometimes you, the, uh, the hose can be uh, very different. Right, so the, this opening on your solid can be very different, and as some situation, in some situations, it doesn't know how to cap it, right? So it relies more information, but this one is straightforward. So let's use cap hose, and this is straightforward. So it can calculate this for you. So this is just a uh, two opening. You just directly close it, right? So let's put it here. And I'm going to turn off the preview of the previous one. So now you can see the surface now, right? So everyone is a solid, right? Everyone is a solid. And then the second step is straightforward. I want to scale it down, right? And remember the scaling, we need a scale uh, point, right? Scale center, right? So before we start to uh, uh, scale it, I want to find the center of the this solid, all right? So remember that last time we use area to, like this component, we use area to find a centroid of the polygon or the surface. But the area doesn't work with solid, the volume, okay? So this, uh, we need to use another component, just follow me, double click. It's called volume, and it's an M, uh, there's a three, small number three, the qubit the M qubit here, this kind of thing. It is very similar to the area, but it just calculates the volume and give you the centroid, right? So it's like 3D version of the area. But this time it doesn't calculate area, it, it calculates the entire volume, and also give us the geometric centroid. So let's use this thing. So you can see every solid has a centroid now, right? And I want to use this centroid as the scale center, right? a scaling center. So it shrink, every component, every part will shrink according to the center here, right? So it has its own center, right? So the next component we are going to use is scale, but this time we need to use scale and U, right? And U. NU means non-uniform, okay? So the previous one we used to shrink the polygon, we used scale, right? Just scale is not NU, it's uniform. So scaling is like the, uh, I give you the factor that for example, the 80%, and I will, sh I will scale down or up according to the factor in all three directions, like X, Y, and Z. So uniformly, uniform uh, scaling means that I would scale your object with the same factor in all the direction. So X, Y, and Z, they'll be in the proportion. It looks like, a, uh, so if you can go to Rhino, 
So for some of these, the object scale uniform means like this. X, Y, and Z, they are scaled uh, in the same factor. Okay, so that's uniform, right? Non-uniform will be similar to like this. There's a scale 1D in Rhino, right? So it will look like this. So there's one dimension, one dimensional scaling, right? And there will be two dimensional scaling. So it, for example, you will only, I never use scale 2D in the Rhino, but it looks like this. Right, so it doesn't scale the z direction. It scales x and y. And scale 3D is actually uh, uniform scaling, so all the directions will be the same factor, right? So the previous one we use is scale uniform. So this time, we are going to use non-uniform. Why? Because if we look at our solid, I want to subtract it, right? I want to subtract it. And to have this opening, so it becomes the bore. Right, the surface around this space. However, if I use uniform scaling, the z direction will be scale as well. So there will be another cap here that will be the space hidden in this box. I still cannot see it, right? I want the opening. So in this case, I just want to scale on the x, y direction, not in the z direction. So the z direction, I want it to be the same height. I don't want to scale down the height, right? I want to keep it, okay? So that's why we are using scale non-uniform, right? Okay, what is the geometry we want to scale down? Is this one, right? After this cap, we use this thing. And then the plan. The plan is the scale center. Again, that, uh, I'm sorry for the bad naming system in Grasshopper. Sometimes you see the center, sometimes you see the point, sometimes you see the plan. We will talk about plan later, that uh, it's, it means working plan. So it's like a small local coordinated system. But it's too much to talk about this idea right now, so just follow me. The centroid will go to the plan, right? So the other three inputs is scale Y, scale, uh, scale X, scale Y, scale Z. That means you can independently input different scale for three different, uh, three, uh, uh, directions, all right? So in this case, I just want scale Y and Z, uh, scale X and Y, and Z will remain to one. So here I'm using a panel. I just put one. Default setting is one. You don't have to input any number, but I typically use uh, this kind of panel if I use, I don't want it to be changed, and I don't like this kind of open input, so I, typically I just use a panel so that I can uh, immediately know what is the input, All right? The scale X and Y, I am going to use a slider to control it, okay? So, follow me, 0 0.1, dot, 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 1, okay? Because I want it to be smaller, so that's why I set up this slider in this way, so like from 10% all the way to 100%, right? And this, this time, I'm going to set up like a 0.8, 80% of the scaling to the X and to the Y. And now you can see this smaller solid here. You can try it. If you input the same factor to the Z, you shrink down the, the, the height, right? And that is not what we want because I want to keep the height the same. So that's why we need to put this one back to remain the same height, all right? All right, so we have the small solid, the value inside, and the bigger value outside. The next thing is just to subtract it, right? So I want to use the bigger one to subtract the smaller one. So just follow me. That's use Boolean subtraction. However, here in Grasshopper, the Boolean subtraction is a different name for 3D object, has a different name. It's called solid difference. All right, solid difference. It's a very confusing name again. So solid difference, so you cannot find Boolean difference here. It's only solid difference, all right? So A is the bigger one. The breadth A is a bigger geometry. The 
uh, break B is smaller geometry, so A minus B, something like that. Okay, so the A is this one, the bigger one, and the B is a smaller one. All right. Be careful about the solid difference. Any kind of Boolean operations in Grace Hyper is very slow. It's very slow. All right. Even in Rhino, the same thing. Boolean subtraction or Boolean addition, Boolean union, intersection, they are all very slow, right? Because it, uh, it has a very complicated uh, jump, uh, equation behind that. All right. Now I'm going to turn off the preview of all the previous geometry. So now you can see it's done, like hollow thing. Can I see it? Uh, let me bake it. So let's bake it. Let's check out the geometry. Right? So you can control the scale to determine the thickness you want. You can be very thick if you the scale number is small, right? So that means I just create a small solder inside and the surface, the board, will be very thick, okay? So this one is straightforward. I think this one might be the easiest one. All right, like this. If we ungroup it, every layer is like this. All right? So here's a challenge for you too. See if you can make this um, uh, interior space uh, different. Like for example, now they are all the same, like in the same proportion, right? So like for example, this one is like uh, always 80% smaller than the ex exterior one. See if you can have another uh, 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 void inside that changing gradient, uh, gradually changing the, the form, just like the outside one. So like uh, the smaller one or the bigger one. What I meant is that the, this small, this interior uh, space, if you could make it more va uh, varied, uh, various, like it's just like a change in size, probably in the middle part, it's super tiny and gradually move it to a bigger one, right? So play with this idea, right? Okay. Uh, let me delete this thing. You can go back to change your geometry, the dry, uh, driver. So uh, sometimes we call this kind of geometry that when we input the square, the hexagon, the, uh, the pentagon, hexagon differently, the whole geometry, the whole design change. Sometimes we call this kind of geometry, we call it driver. So it's a design driver. So you change the driver, the everything changes. So let's change the driver here. Just check it out if everything works, All right? So there's a square, All right? And that's change to the hexagon, a uh, pentagon, All right? Everything works. Okay. I'm not going to do the hexagon again. I'm going to change back to the triangle, All right? So far, so good. Can you see all the representation in this one? Do you have this in your desktop? You good? I thought that you should So basically, if you can do something or do something where it will be like that. You are using the center of this geometry. 
but we need to use the center of each chapter. So you can see the center is from this input to this right. This input curve that we use now. So this chapter is actually here on the center of only one point we shrink down everything, everything according to this point only. But when we do the scale, we want to scale according to everything centered. Okay, let's move on. We have the one last one. Okay. So we have this. So far, so good. Now we are going to move the last one. Last one is this one. All right. So I want to use a solid box to represent it. All right. So it's not like this. I want to use the directly extrusion, so it's not twist. You can see the previous one we are, you, we are doing is twist, right? So every surface is actually not a straight surface. So this time I want to be more discrete, right? So with a solid box to represent it, all right? So that's the last one. This one is straightforward too. Let's go back. Let me turn off the preview of this one. If you are afraid of your, uh, the performance of your laptop, uh, your computer, you, when you are not using, when you are not going to see, you, you, anyhow you want to turn it off, this solid difference you can directly disable it. So how to disable, let's turn off this, bad, this component. You can go to the component and use the middle click. And here's a switch. So one is like a enable switch and the other one is like a, a little bit grayed out. It's disabled. So when you hit the disable, you turn into this color color, that means it's not working, okay, it's not working. So it's not only turn off the preview, it's that it doesn't calculate anything for now. So if you want to disable the entire thing here, you can go all the way to the, uh, to the front and disable the, the, the component, and you will see because this one is off, so there's no data output. So all the components would turn orange. That means it's empty right now. So you could use this way to control your performance. All right. So sometimes you are running so many components, so many geometries in one file, and it's easy to crash your, uh, your, your system. And you have to wait. Every time you move it, you wait five seconds. You, 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 you add one more component, you wait 10 seconds, something like that. It's very painful. So I would suggest, so for example, this one, if you are, if we are not using this, uh, this is a, a line, right? The line representation we have. If we are not going to use it right now, I would go to here to see if I can just turn off this component, disable it, so this entire thing will be turn, will be shut down, right? And after, if I want to use it again, I just turn it back. So use enable and you go back. Okay, so I sometimes I use this thing. Or a, even a better uh, coding style, you can see this component is outlined to a lot of uh, different uh, components, right? So technically, if I turn off, it disable this component, this branch will be shut down, right? However, because it's 
connected to a lot of different branches. So if I just directly disable this component, I will disable everything, right? So here, I will use this way. So for example, that is, sometimes I will use this. Double click the wire. For example, this output to this and that and that for this branch, this three, right? So this component is outputting the data to these three components, right? So then if I can turn off just one component here and it connect to three, that's, that's, that's the best, right? So there's a small tip here. You can double click on the wire. You have this connector. It doesn't do anything. It's just like a, for you to have the connector like this. So you can connect to other thing. So that means this component from this data is, branch, is, is branching out to three components. And here you could turn off this one, right? So it's shut down this branch only, right? Okay. And this one, because we shut down this entire thing already, so I'm going to turn all of back. Just use this one as a switch to control it. You can have Scribble here to, uh, as a note to yourself, right? Okay. Speak, speaking to the Scribble, let's put the Scribble here. That is a line representation here, just for us to remember. And this is a scribble point representation, right? And this is surface scribble, surface representation, right? Okay. One last thing is to do the solid, right? Stacking. Okay. So stacking. Let's go back to check what we have again. We have these. So it's pretty straightforward. I just extrude it and done, right? So that's that should be easy, right? So let's grab this surface, uh, this polygon again. This time I'm going to use curves. This black hexagon again as a as a, a, a container to save. I'll put this thing to here as a container. I'm going to drag it down to another space here, and this is the curves we are going to use, right? So here I'm turn off the preview. I'm using this one. Right? So it should be straightforward. Here is another component we are going to introduce you. So this is a extrude. So extrude has a lot of different components. So you can see extrude along, extrude point, extrude plan, extrude blah, 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 blah. Let's use this very straightforward one. So like extrude, and you look like a book. Right? So extrude component is very straightforward. Give me the geometry you want to extrude and give me the direction. Okay, so here the direction is not, so again, it doesn't have a lot of information here, but direction include the height, the how far you want to extrude, all right? So this input has to be a vector. And vector, again, vector is a, is a, is a mathematical uh, component that has direction and the magnitude, right? So it has a length. So this is a, a, a vector, and we need to use this thing to control how high we want to go, right? How high this box are going to do, are going to, to extrude. So firstly, we just input this curve as a base. And now we need to give it a direction, right? So follow me, type Z. So let's find this unit Z. That means this component is to give us one unit Z direction vector, right? We used this before. 
Okay, so we put it into direction. Right, there's one unit height, so we need to calculate how high we need to go. Right, so we need to calculate this number. Right, how do how do how do I know this number? We can go all the way back to here, right? When we are producing this, uh, when we are translating this uh, polygon, we set up the series component here, and every step, that means every step is a 10 unit, right? So this 10 unit is actually the height that we are looking for, right? So we can output this thing, directly go to here, it's a long way, all right, uh, down, uh, all right, there you go, here. So exactly the same height, all right? All right, sometimes I don't like this kind of very long wire. So here you can have an option to change the wire uh, uh, display type. You can go to the input of any component, right click on the input. Here is a wire display. So you can, now it's default. You can have fans, I don't know what it is, let's try it. Oh, it's just grayed out. The third one is the one I use mostly, is called hidden. When you click the hidden, the wire is gone. It looks like Wi-Fi now, it's like wireless. Okay. And you click it, you will show up, all right? You show up the wire. Otherwise, you cannot debug, right? Where is it connected, right? So when you click, you will show up. When you are not click it, it's just wireless. It's Wi-Fi, okay? Very neat, right? So now we have this height, but it's, uh, it's not solid. Right, so the last thing you already know, very straightforward thing is to cap the holes and done. Right? Here is a small thing. Let's let's see. I want to turn on just enable everything now. I want to see them all together again. Okay. However, I want to, uh, if I turn on all the preview of everyone, they are all together, right? This one, this one, this one. They are all together, like one, two, three, and this is four, right? This four. They are all together. I want to separate them. So here is the thing I do. I just move one by one. For example, this one, I just move to the uh, Z direction. Right? Oh, the, sorry, the, uh, the X direction. Is it X or, okay, let me see. Okay, X direction, so I want to move it to the right. So I'm going to use move component. I want to move the geometry, the first point representation. And the motion, again, motion is direction, is the <laughs> vector. So this uh, uh, vector that we are going to use, I'm going to use x, unit x. All right. I'm going to just move it to 50 units. So it's here, this line, uh, there's a point representation, right? Let's go back to the to the perspective view, All right? I just move this thing, and I'm going to hide the previous geometry. So this one is here. All right? I'm going to copy paste a lot of them. I'm going to move this as well, right? So the line representation, but this time I want to be 50 is the first thing here. I want to have another 50 here, so that's 100. So let's recap. We can actually 
have expression here x plus 50 so that means this 50 I add more 50 here so now I'm going to use the same slider here I'm not going to use multiple slider because when I control this for example I if I go to 100 the other thing will move together right so this is the initial position and every time I just put 50 50 50 right again these two components I'm going to copy and paste do this solid the difference the surface representation and we need to change the expression to X plus 100 and commit change so there's a surface and last one is a solid right and you already know what we're going to do is 150 right so we can see all of them again this is a very long wire I don't want to see it I just hide the wire let's use, let's use Wi-Fi Right? I just keep this one right so if you click it you can still see they are connected if not you will just here so make your canvas cleaner right and here I'm going to turn off all the preview of all the previous geometry so this first one the point the line the surface Decided, and oops, you see we have total solid because we extrude, right? So every polygon is extruded to the top. So they are not at the same height. So I want to fix it. So let's go back to fix this one. I don't want to extrude the last one. I just want to extrude all one, two, three, four, five, all the way to the 24. I don't want to extrude the last one because I want to keep all of them at the same height, right? So that's do the recap again before we extrude it, extrude it before we put it in extrusion. I want to take the last one out, right? So remember what kind of component we are using. We are using call index, right? Call index, C U L L, call index. So call index means you give me the index, I will remove that item for you. And we want the last one, right? We want the last one. So we need to get the index from our list, right? So for now, let's use the panel to check out. We have how many? We have 20. Oh, I changed the number, okay. We have 20 uh, components here. I want to remove the 19th one. Right, this one I want to remove it. So here I'm going to use a list length. And put this list length as index. However, remember the index starts from zero, so we need to subtract one here. So go to the index. I want to make an expression x minus one, commit a change, and this curve go to the list so now you see we only have that many if I turn on the preview this one has one more but this one will go here only right so that is the list we want to do I will change it rewire it to the base it's shorter Okay, I'm going to hide all the geometry again. Just leave these four. All right, so points, lines, surface, and solid. Okay, now you can bake one by one to see. Play with the 
jump tree. I bake this one. I bake this one. I bake this one. I always use right click to use to do the baking because I want to group them, right? So group them. So let's go to uh, Rhino. One, two, three, four. Let's put it into other representation. I want to see the technical. Just line joins. Right. Technical is bad. All right. There are multiple uh, representation here. Let's go to uh, check out the representation. Have you used Rhino to do the joins? Okay, let's, let's go through this thing. So sometimes if we want to have the representation like line joins, like this, right? They are line joins. How do we go about it? I use uh, technical representation. Technical, it will be just line join. But there are some settings we need to set up in the uh, technical. So typically, I will go to option, the tools and options. There are some settings you can change here. In the bottom of the left part, you can see the view. So you can pull down the menu, and there will be display mode. Let's expand it again. You will see many different uh, views now. Wireframe, shaded, rendered, ghost, x-ray, technical, arctic, pen, artist, right? Let's go to technical. So there are some setting. You can change the setting here to see. So like a, I just turn off the silhouette. So that is a thing we need to check. Hidden line, you can see that typically I would uncheck the hidden line because when we do the hidden line, this is a dash line behind. And I don't like it because it's, uh, it's too much. That's just, it's like a ghost view, like an x-ray view. So I don't do that. So I go to option. Again, view, display mode, technical. I will uncheck the show hidden line here. So we can have clean drawing like this. You can go further to the object to have different setting. But so far, let's stop here. Right? OK, so that's technical view. Look at these. You can see this is very messy, right? There might be something wrong here in this uh, representation. Because all the others are fine, but this one is bad. Let me check. Let's go back to check the line representation. This might be a problem. Double check it. So the line representation here, we pipe it. We deconstruct it. So where is fun? Let's check it again. So that should be fun. This one, right? The base. So edges here. The pipes, right? So that's turn on the preview again. So this is how I check the uh, the my code. If I found something. Wrong, weird, I'll go back to see where's what's happening with my code, right? So this is from here. I'm going to bake it again to see if I have the same issue that so many lines together. But this one it looks okay, right? If we turn to the technical view, check it out again. Oh, it's not okay. Oh, so this is a problem, right? So let's check it, what is what is wrong here. Why well, I have the geometry here? Okay. So let's check this one. Line like curve, line like curve, line like curve, line like curve. Okay. Loft, prep, ages. 
Okay, that should be okay. Subtype, radius, cap, it should be fine. Ages. Oh, I kind of know what it is. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, this is a, a geometry we break, uh, we explode from our solid, right? So, but this surface is not flat. So somehow, sometimes it will represent this thing is like a line, like it's not a line, right? Let me see if we can change it. I'm not sure. Is it better? No, it's not better. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter that much, but still, it's like I'm picky about this thing. Line, 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 line. It's okay. Let's leave it here. It's okay. Don't struggle. It's still a pipe. Okay. Let me turn off preview of this. All right. Let's go back to the representation. Right, so uh, where is this? Okay, here. So when I have this geometry, sometimes I want to output the two D joints, right? In the in the in the in the poster or in some in a portfolio, I want the two D joints. So sometimes I will use this thing. So why I let me do it again. Bake, yes, please. Okay, so I'm using this one as an example, right? So, for example, I want to output the join here. If you are not happy with this line, we can always go back to check the option to see if we can turn off the thing. So, sometimes you can turn off the ISO curve. Let me see if we can turn off the ISO curve. They are intersection. Show intersection. Okay, not show intersection. And I'm going to Boolean Union. <coughs> Fail. Ah, never mind. Show intersection object. No, it's okay. Let's forget about this. It's okay. It's, it's still fine. So sometimes I want to output very good view, like a like a isometric view, like this, right? I want to output the line joins. So I will select it and use Make Two D. All right, Make Two D. Make 2D is a command in Rhino that it will flatten the, the view for you. It's not very smart again, but I would, when I make 2D, I would uncheck the hidden lines. I don't want to hit, I don't want a hidden line. So I will uncheck this one, and all the others are with the same, and I will group the output, and just click OK. Right? Once you have make 2D, you will see a drawing on the floor like this. You can go to the top view. That is your line join. All right, so it's clean. Sometimes it's not doing very well because you cannot see the seam, right? It relies on a lot of setting to do this right, but so far that I think it's good for us just to create this representation, right? You can go back to the, so there's one. Oh. It's not really group. Let's group it. So I'm going to 
take this one, the surface representation one, and let's do it again. So this one, I'm just going to move it here, set up the isometric view again, and I will make 2D. this again I don't know why it doesn't group but it's okay let's do ourselves so group it go to top view All right okay there are multiple ways to output your uh, uh, representation I like this way because it's lines, so it's a vector. You can put it into uh, Illustrator, you can put it into uh, uh, other software to do the line weight. So it's, I prefer this one. But there are some other ways to output the, jump, the, the representation. So let me show you. I'm going to set up isometric view again. Let's use this one. Another one is directly print your viewport. So you can use Control P to print it. You can set up like a 12 inch by 12 inch. Uh, I always use 900 DPI. I just, you know, 300 is for printing. 600 is is for uh, high definition screen. 900 is for crazy people. So just make sure you use a very high resolution to do this thing. You can set up the window that you want. That's another th thing that I don't like this thing because you have set up your canvas like this. So it's a little bit sloppy, right? Okay, once you select the window, you press OK. Or you can direct set up the scale. So for example, I want to be one inch, uh, 12 millimeters on the, in the model and one inch on the paper, something like that. Uh, it's not a good one. Let's use this thing. But anyway, you, you get an idea. You can set up the, the scale directly, right? So if you are using the setting window, it's hard to get a good uh, constant uh, scale, right? But you still can print it. But be careful, when you print it, you save the file as a JPEG, like a test one. Make sure you double check your printed file because sometimes it can be very bad, like this. The line weight is super light, right? So, uh, and the worst thing is, is JPEG file, it's a pixel file. So you cannot adjust line weight anymore. So that's I don't like, unless I just directly print the 2D object, right? So 2D object, I can print it, but this time, I typically don't print, use the print to print the 3D object, right? So that's not a good idea. So, but still, you can choose which one you want to use. If you want to change the line weight, the print weight here, this object is in the default setting, the layer. You can see a small window here, right? then you can adjust your print weight here. I'm not sure if it's related to your print weight here, but you can try it. For example, I want to print thicker line, okay? So you can change your layer, all the layers, all the objects in this layer will follow this setting print width, right? And let's try again to see if change. If not change, that means this setting is not useful. I think it would be the same because the print width is for lines only. And this is 3D object, so it's not lines. So you cannot follow the option. Okay, so that's uh, just for you, your reference. I'm going to change it to the default. All right. Another way we can do is uh, the last one. 
sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't because it can be very sloppy as well. You can output directly like a screenshot. Not use your screenshot, screenshot button, no. You go to Rhino, you type negative sign, view, capture to file. View, capture, so negative sign, view, capture to file. You can use this thing that you will directly grab the screenshot for you. So for example, you can have the setting of your screenshot. Let me change it to 2000 pixel to 2000 pixel, all right? Scale is very funky. I think it only works with one, scale one and scale 0.5. I try other numbers, it doesn't work. So if it's one, let's just put it one, right? Before you hit enter, you have to go here. Here's a, the last one, it's called browse. You have to click it, set up the file name, like a test two, and save. And it's outputting the image to your destination. So the test two. So it looks like this, right? Again, it's pixel-based image. And the worst thing for this one is that, you know right now you cannot real-timing show the line weights in your window. The line weight can only be seen when you print it out, right? When you print. So it's almost just like a screenshot. Sometimes I use this because when I was frustrated by all the other options, I would turn it into here. But the bad thing is that you, you need to set up a good view so to make sure that you have the same scale, right? So that's a tip I use. So when I have this thing, when I bake another one, for example, I'm going to bake this one. Okay. I, how do I do if I want to keep them in the same scale if I am using this the last method to output the view, right? So I would drag it far away, use zoom as, Z as to zoom in, or some reference things that I can zoom, right? So I might have a box the every time, because zoom as you calculate the scale according to the object you select. So I will use this thing to make sure that the scale is the same. So far, I'm still very sloppy because this volume and this volume are different, right? So if you really want to be very precise of the things, I would have this thing, like a extrude a curve. So every time I will use this thing to, like a, as a zoom S, and I'll hide it. And I use this thing to, to to output my, I was setting the same, test two, to output my image. And I will use this, the same box as my reference here. Use zoom mass again and hide it and output the view. So, I can somehow make sure they are in the same scale. All right, it's very tedious. But to be honest, the Rhino is not very good at outputting this kind of a visual uh, representation. That's the three ways I use all the time. You can have your own if you are familiar with Rhino, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I would just use Mac2D because the line drawing, I can directly output the vector-based uh, drawing. That is very good for, do, for doing the, 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 the post-production. But Mac2D has its limitation as well, right? Okay, anyway, let's talk about the uh, uh, derivable. So, that is actually the derivable. Let's go to the canvas. Okay. 
you can go to see the hey now all right so deliverable has four things you need to submit first your grasshopper file right grasshopper file the one you are doing right now the second is your rhino file remember we talked about this thing at the, in the very first time that always save two files one rhino file one grasshopper file that should be in the same folder right just two files grasshopper and uh, and uh, and uh, and the uh, rhino file hello and the third thing is 16 6 inch by 6 inch image all right like i didn't set up the i didn't set up the uh the dimension yet but you'll be like this 16 6 inch 6 inch image every image has one design variations all right and what 16 so here is a reference for you we have to have these 16 images the first one is point point representation for one design all right so you change the base curve right we use triangle square hexagon and the pentagon now that's now that's your moment to design you have to change the base curves right to bait the different curves input the curve don't use the one we are using right now because it is already done right try to design your curves the base curve to get a good output try the design right so i don't have the restriction on the base curve but just make sure that you can uh, it can run so here's a tip you can it, according to the script we are doing today and it doesn't work with really curved curve it should be poly lines okay lines 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 like this you just got, it's okay all right so like a triangle rectangle hexagon pentagon they are all point lines all right so here's a reminder don't just increase the number of side like oh let's use uh, uh octagon and that's a design and uh, design your own uh driver geometry okay try to play with this idea you it will surprise you it will surprise you that when you input other uh, curves it will surprise you so at least four different curves for each curve the driver curve you will have four representation right point line surface and volume right so you just change the driver's curve you have four right for each one is six inch by six inch right so you have to generate this six inch six inch uh, six inch by six inch image one is one design right so one is point curve one point curve one line curve one surface curve one volume all right so that's 16 images all right please put it into one folder and zip it and submit it right so that's a grasshopper file rhino file you can separate it uh, you can submit them just in, in terms of file or you can put them into a folder just submit it this 16 inches a uh, 16 6 by 6 <laughs> image should be one folder and zipped all right please be aware of the file name put a good file name convention so like a point one point two point three point four or curve point curve one point curve two point blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know that all right the last thing is one pdf file please put this 16 image into this format all right so point the variation one point line surface volumes point line surface volumes point surface a uh, line surface volume i have an example for you according uh, to about this pdf file you can go to module here's a sample so that is what i'm looking for right i i always put the description here so for example this uh, the base i say is a triangle you don't have to have a name you can say curve one curve two curve three i say point representation layers i put the layers i have 25 layers 
I have the sphere radius as information to let people know that, okay, what is information of your code, right? Your parameters. Pipe radius is 0.5 and 0.25. That means the center one is 0.5. The, the, the substructure is 0.25. So I sometimes I put this metadata to let people know my parameters. So that would be good if you can put this metadata as well. You can follow my text. You can directly use them. It's okay, right? Or you can come, come up with your own. But anyway, that should be a that should be a PDF file look like this, right? So design one. Oh, sorry, I messed up the order. So there should be point, line, surface, and uh, and the uh, volume. So it's like a uh, flip the matrix. Point, line, surface, volume, right? Sorry, this one is wrong. I will update this one. So point, line, so this is a variation one, variation two, variation three, variation four. All right? Any question? Okay. Anyway, check out this one. I will update this one again. So sorry that the, the order is not the arrangement is is different from the syllabus. Please use the syllabus one, right? The syllabus says, the handout says, point, line, surface, volume, point, line, surface, volume. So this is first design, second design, third design, fourth design, all right? Okay? Don't do too much post-production. Like, we don't need to do Photoshop, anything, no cutter, line joints, all right? Line joints. So I would highly recommend you use Mac 2D, put it into good scale, and the lightweight, don't too light, right? Take care of the lightweight. Craftsmanship is also in the grading uh, criteria, so just be careful of this thing, right? Okay, that's it for the first one. Any question? Do you all have your code done in the here? Let me know if you haven't done uh, I will stay here for uh, 10 or 15 more minutes. I can help you to address any issue, all right? Let's wrap up the, the code here. So go home, change the curves, and then you can do the assignment. That will be straightforward. Right. Okay, that's the code here today.